Greetings, this is Pastor Russ from Zion Stone Church here to provide our Wednesday meditation. We're coming up to the seventh Sunday of Easter. Now one of the lectionary choices was is from the book of Acts. This is Acts chapter 1 verses 6 through 14 and I'm going to read it to you from the New Revised Standard Version. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All of these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends our scripture reading for this day. Ascension Day was last Thursday. It's 40 days from Easter. Now where I grew up in Lancaster County, among Amish and Pennsylvania German families, many of them farmers, Ascension Day meant no work, no turning the soil. I must say it's Ascension Day is this Thursday, not last Thursday. But Ascension Day was, and it still is for them, a day of rest. Ascension Day is, is often overlooked because it is hard to celebrate a day that reminds us of God's absence. This sort of farewell to Jesus. You know, it's a bittersweet time when we have to say goodbye to someone who has been part of our church family, part of our community, and is now moving on to a different family, a, a different place. We are reminded that our lives are filled with hellos and goodbyes. Now none of these hellos or goodbyes are without sadness and anticipation. And we often find ourselves asking, where do I fit into all of this? That was the same for the disciples who took this opportunity before Jesus ascended to ask, Lord, is this the time when you will restore Israel? Is this the time when we will finally get what we want? But those questions were not answered for them because this transition is a goodbye and Jesus is returning to the Father, leaving behind not exactly what they wanted, but definitely what they needed through heavenly messengers with a forever promise. And that promise is Jesus will come again. You know, we seem to be destined to be looking for God, yet we seem almost as destined to look in the wrong places. For some, the search takes place right here among the things of this world or if we have already discovered 
that we cannot find God in the pursuits of this world, we might well, very well find ourselves staring up toward the heavens, waiting for God to give us a sign or send us the answer to our why questions, or reveal his perfect will for our lives. Now, all of this looking for God, when we should be focusing on Jesus, focusing on Jesus, the one in whom God is revealed, the one who brought God to us, the one who is God with us. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. That's Jesus' promise. And then we are given the great mission statement. You will be my witnesses. That means just what it says. You will be my witnesses to what you have seen. So, if you haven't seen God in the world, then you do not need to be witnesses. But you know, I've heard stories about God's work in your lives, in your families, in your friends' lives, in this community, and in our world. You are witnesses to that. I have seen the work you do. And I echo the words of the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Colossians. Whatever you do, you work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since I have seen these works, I too am a witness. It's not to what we don't know or what we haven't learned, but only to what we have seen. For that witness in the world, God offers protection and the Holy Spirit offers power. But we all struggle with change. And now some changes have been thrust on us. We long to be back in our church home, back to connecting and relating and worshiping together. I heard that sentiment loud and clear through the phone calls and emails and text messages that I have received ever since the lockdown began. And these cries continue, I believe even louder, as this lockdown continues with no clear end in sight. And we feel the loss. But can this loss, can any loss, ever contribute to making our lives better than before? Can this loss, can any loss, make us stronger than what we were? Can this loss, can any, lo any loss, draw us closer to God than before? Now before Easter dawns, there is Good Friday. And in the face of death, God brings forth new life. The best proof of Easter and the resurrection is the change in the disciples once Jesus ascended to God. No one would have guessed what could happen when they stopped looking into the sky and started looking at each other instead. But those 11 disciples, with nothing to show for their following, had a story to tell, a story full of sadness, but also a story full of joy. So as we pause one more time, and point our eyes to the empty tomb, a place of grief and a place of great joy. Let us give thanks to God that our changes, our hellos, our goodbyes, our very lives are rooted in this one simple fact in which we echo every Easter, every Sunday celebration. And that is this, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Now for our musical selection today, I've chosen the song called Cornerstone. It's a song that this week, and even this past week, has been playing over and over again in my head. I've been singing it as I mow the lawn. And I wanted to share it with you today. Be blessed. Thank you.
Stand before the throne. 